Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Games Video video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with TSMC, specifically news that the company are entering a mass production of 7NM products on behalf of AMD. And these products do include Vega 7NM. So, of course, that would be the Radeon Instinct and the Pro Vegas that we've been hearing so much about recently. But it also extends to, at least according to the reports, AMD's CPU side of things as well and of course that does mean the Zen 2 architecture. Now these reports are come to us from these reports come to us through China Times and they're telling us that mass production has ramped up in TSMC's Fab 15. Now for right now Vega has already been confirmed but it appears that the company are also winning the contract to produce Zen 2 as well. I'm going to read out verbatim a quote from TS MC. Compared to its 10nm FinFET process, TSMC's 7nm FinFET produces, uh, sorry, features a 1.6 times logic density, a 20% speed improvement, a 40% power reduction. TSMC sets another industry record by launching two separate 7nm FinFET tracks, one optimized for mobile applications, the other high performance computing applications. Oh, and if you're wondering, according to reports, 7nm TSMC process expected to deliver about a 35% increase in efficiency compared to 16FF+. Now this is obviously great news for AMD as well as TSMC, but from reports it would appear that global foundries will also be helping to produce chips for AMD as well, and this is simply because AMD's demand will be so high for the current processors. Indeed, the reason that Global Foundries and TSMC will both be able to provide chips, the 7NM pitches and the SRAM cells are very similar between both foundries, and this was a deliberate choice so that AMD could leverage the um, production capabilities of both partners. Now, Zen 2, from what we're hearing, will debut first in Epic. Just a quick uh, reminder, Epic is going to be skipping Zen Plus, which of course is built on 12NM, and instead is going to move straight to Zen 2. Currently, uh, AMD have a couple of samples, but they're going to be uh, providing samples to their partners over the next couple of months. And then mass production is going to begin, of course, which is what we're primarily reporting on now. And then the customers will actually be getting their Epic processors next year. Now let's move over to Intel. Yesterday, I published a video which detailed the fact that AMD are very boastful at the moment concerning its uh, forecasts regarding its EPIC 7NM processors. Specifically, it claims that Rome, the 7NM's EPIC that are being released next year, are being targeted to fight against Intel's Ice Lake processors. Now, the reason that's so bad for Intel is that Ice Lake is not going to be released until much later. In short, if the reports are to be believed, AMD should have the run of the place, at least in terms of performance and possibly price slash performance ratio. So Intel's roadmap for the server has been a little bit quiet. And unlike AMD, who have been very forthright and very vocal about what it's planning to release, which is obviously expected. After all, they are the underdog right now. Yes, they are gobbling up market share for Intel, but they still have a lot to prove. And the only way they can do that is by making sure that they fill their customers, in this case server providers, with confidence. Now you may say to yourself, well, I'm a gamer, why does that necessarily impact me? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, despite the fact that there are some differences between the chips, for example, you know, the number of PCIe lanes and other bits and pieces, essentially we are getting cut down derivatives of the same processes in our desktop PCs or laptops or whatever. There are core tweaks, of course, there are small changes here and there, but ultimately they are the same thing. The second thing is what happens in the data center, particularly for AMD, who have been the underdog for so long. And to be honest with you, their research and development arms have just been criminally underfunded does directly impact us as well. After all, the more capital they have, the more money they can put back into investments, and the more competitive they can be with Intel, and the more competitive they can be with Intel, the more that we, as end users, benefit. So here's what we know thus far about Intel's server roadmap. The first thing, of course, is that they are planning a small refresh of the Skylake X architecture known as Cascade Lake. This is very similar to what they currently have, but with tweaks here and there.
with Cascade Lake AP, which is the follow-up to Cascade Lake, Intel plans to execute their own MCM, multi-chip module approach. This is very similar, by the way, to how AMD are able to make such gargantuan processors, such as, let's say, the Threadripper 2, and of course, Epic, specifically the Epic 2, which is being rumored to clock in at 64 cores. Now, there are multiple uh, advancements that they're gonna be putting in with this. Intel currently have three different die structures, LCC, low core count, HCC, high core count, and ECC. Can you guess what that means? Yes, that's right, extreme core count. But when we see MCMs, there will be a much greater gamut of what in, uh, Intel will be able to produce. The problem is the release schedule for those processors does appear to coincide rather well with the existence of Zen 2. And so Intel, are also going to be releasing another set of processors, which is known as Cooper Lake. Now, I want to stress, these rumors are just that. At the moment, these have not been officially confirmed by Intel, and there is a lot less information on these. But Intel Cooper is going to be based on 14NM++. Ice Lake is going to be the first 10NM CPU, so we'll get into that in just a moment. So Cooper Lake, from the rumors, is said to be an intermediary solution between the Cascade Lake family and Ice Lake family. There are a couple of differences though. What we see here is an increased number of dies. It has dual dies, so two dies, as well as six UPIs. UPIs act as the communication around the chip, sending data to and from in ultra low latency fashion and lots of high bandwidth uh, connectivity. After that, we'll finally see the launch of Ice Lake, which is going to be on a 10NM POS process node, and it will be on the Whitley platform. From what we can tell, it's going to be an eight channel memory type of configuration, and it will most likely be competing, at least in the time frame, with AMD's Zen 3. And this leads us to many of the same problems that I discussed yesterday. The problem is, though, that according to AMD, Zen 3 is not going to be competing against Ice Lake in performance. According to AMD's estimates, they believe that they will be able to compete with Ice Lake with Zen 2. Now, Zen 2 will be releasing a prior, once again, to Intel's Ice Lake CPUs, which obviously is a really bad thing. Now, I did cover this somewhat yesterday, I admit, but because this new information has popped up, I wanted to uh, kind of investigate this a little bit further and get some people's opinions on this. Now, of course, there are a couple of things we need to take into consideration. One, Intel have not executed this stuff yet, so AMD are making some guesses of to, as to, excuse me, Intel's performance. They did uh, specify that they were using the most aggressive estimates, their estimates, of what Intel would be capable of executing in terms of performance uplift from generation to generation. So in theory, at least, they should be able to get an idea of what uh, Ice Lake will be capable of. And therefore, assuming their estimates are correct, Zen 2 will be an incredible processor. And this is somewhat what I was saying yesterday. Um, I really wanna know what the CPU is capable of, not just for the server market, but also for us as regular consumers. I mean, just imagine, and this is just kind of me speculating here, but imagine they managed to achieve a 20% improvement in performance at IPC. That, that's, that's, that's actually way too much. Let's say 15% IPC. Let's say that they managed to reduce power consumption a little bit. And crucially, they managed to get that clock speed up to let's say five gigahertz, which is certainly possible with improvements on the silicon, 7NM process and all of that jazz. That's pretty monstrous. But then imagine AMD already be aggressive and then they said that we're going to increase the core count now i'm not saying that intel cannot do the same they could obviously increase the core count and they have with coffee Lake. but it's going to be a very interesting state of affairs exactly what happens between these two companies now are intel doomed i said this yesterday but i'm just going to reiterate it for new viewers or for those who didn't catch yesterday's video no they're definitely not um even if intel are on the back foot for a couple of years, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna rebound. Personally speaking, I'm always of the mindset of kind of hope for the best, but expect the worst. My personal opinion, if you are looking for a server-based processor, just keep AMD in mind, but there are still gonna be a lot of folks who just go with Intel. Why? Because ultimately, Intel are known. Yes, they've had some problems with security, 
but we don't know if AMD have problems with security which just have not been found yet. Remember, there have been those issues found with the um, with the secure processor that AMD in implement on Epic CPUs as well. With that said, it's hard to argue with what AMD have managed to accomplish with essentially a pathetic budget. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. If anything, I'm being very um, complimentary to the company. They essentially had a budget which was pennies compared to Intel. But Intel have just been able to not really focus that much. And I'm not saying this out of dislike for Intel. Far from it. I want Intel to be bloody competitive. I remember when I was purchasing processors back in the day. I if you've if you've been a PC user or computer user or interested in tech for ages, you might recall processors like the Celeron 300 and how incredible that CPU was. Do you remember that? Do you remember the time when we saw the Q6600 launch and the sheer value of the quad core performance of that thing, or even the 2500K? Do you remember how far you could overclock the 2500K? And one of the reasons behind that, of course, is because it was soldered. Intel with that 2500K and the 2600K, arguably actually kind of screwed themselves because the performance was so great on those chips. You could make a very good argument, you can make a very strong argument that if you've got 2600K or 2700K or equivalent right, right now, it's still debatable whether you need to upgrade your processor or not, even if you're running a 1080 or a 1080 Ti or a Vega 64, assuming you're maxing the resolution out at like 1440p with lots of MSAA or you're running at 4K, because most likely you're going to be GPU bound. Those chips, ch those chips, assuming you've got fast RAM and you've got a highly clocked processor, they are monstrous. They are monstrous, my friend. They are very impressive, even today. And think of how old those damn things are. So that's the Intel I want to get back to. And the AMD that I want to see again are the Af or the Athlons, the, the days of like the, the Athlon 700s and the and uh, the Durons kicking Intel's butt because that is what I like in terms of technology. I, I love that. I love one company releasing stuff and the other one's like, oh, oh, okay, so you're the first one gigahertz. Well, here's what we're going to do. I think that's pretty awesome for us as customers. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and do check out the other video for today, which is investigating ray tracing on the Xbox. Take care of yourselves.